Wow, we got we have a message, important message from our sponsor, the TA. Oh, so just a reminder to not send emails to my personal email address. That includes their learning suite that goes directly to my personal email address. Uh, I got like 100 emails yesterday just from various places, and I haven't looked at them all yet, so I apologize if I didn't respond to you. Um, if it goes to the TA email address, it does link straight to my phone, and I try, try to look at those more often. Wait, hold on a second, hold on a second. There's something about the TA. So let's go to, where do we have this post? Oh, in the syllabus. Let's look in the syllabus. I think I have the syllabus section. I don't have the syllabus. Uh, distribute and go to that link. Is this what we needed? Let's just make sure we've got the right one in the syllabus. That's the wrong email. Go on content and learning suite. So. Cameron, see if there's a way for us to change that in on the syllabus in learning as we go back. Let's correct that. Uh, but if we go under content and contact info, TA contact info is one of the things under content, and there it is. Uh, there's Cameron Smith and his things next to it. And office hours are still to be updated. Then again, it is still the first week of class, so he's <coughs> not the link one. I'm getting your office hours done until Saturday night. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cameron, anything else? Um, please make sure I, I'm actually on the wrong course as well. Oh. As educator, so I can't check. But out of, on the, the wrong course, there were 19 students that I could see on there. Three of them used the wrong ID. Please use your net ID rather than your student number. Oh, hey, let's, let's take a look at that. Transfer the grade will be incorrect. Oh, can you look up? Oh, you can't look up something. Uh, please double check all of you. Please double check because I've had people that are like, I don't have, you know, I got the right thing and they didn't. I've had to find like six times. Please double check. Make sure that it is indeed your net ID, not your student number that you signed. Hey, okay, we're going to have, we're going to have in-class exercise. We're going to pause the recording <laughs> before we kind of continue with today's content. So there was a practice for the uh, chapter two. I didn't see any uh, tricks to that one, but the practice. That's supposed to be on there. The practice. For the yeah, it's actually about third. I don't quite know what you mean. So, within that chapter, I gave a big example of how to do it, but you couldn't download the. Ah, there's like the spreadsheet for. Oh, like the workbook that had the examples. Yeah, it wasn't available. So, you couldn't follow along. Yeah, I think I have those. Let me make sure they get integrated with the book. Okay. The author on the book is actually still going through and doing some like post editing, some, some post moving it up editing. And he's working on a different copy. I can copy that over. I think he actually has that put up. Let me copy it over here. I think in in uh, two point one, I just said that it's not available in the instruction. I think it's kind of like the bullet points. It's right there, that last little bit. The embedded material does not exist. Oh, so it looks like he's trying to put it there, and there's something that's like a system message. <laughs> that's where that's where the link should be. You're right. All right, let me look into that. Will you send me an email on that? Okay. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're not going to go through the same example. We're going to walk through a different example that covers the same material um, in a little bit different way. You'll have two voices on this. The author will have me. We're going to cover the same ground. And we're going to start with a brand new blank workbook. So just open up Excel and blank workbook. File, new, blank workbook. Okay, so it turns out that the Excel has this thing called the Web Query Wizard. And it was it was kind of first introduced, I don't even know what version of Excel it was introduced in, probably Excel 2003. It's definitely been around since then, and maybe even before that, maybe Excel 2000. It was cutting edge when it was introduced. How much Competition is there against Microsoft Excel in terms of spreadsheets, you know, other spreadsheet programs that people think, you know, hey, I'm going to quit using Excel and use something else. In terms of being robust. Not. Well, yeah, the open office is there, and it's a viable, it's a viable choice. Uh, well, who's probably the more, who's, what's probably the one that, that uh, Microsoft's probably more worried about? Google Sheets. Yeah, Google Sheets are probably more worried about because it's free and pretty capable. But it really doesn't.
doesn't have any competitor in the in the business world. And so, sadly, Microsoft has kind of let the, 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 the uh, web query wizard languish. They really haven't brought it along. They've done almost, so far as I can tell, they haven't done anything to it for the past 16 years. And since they introduced it, it's pretty much the same. The trouble is, the web has advanced. And so almost any time you use the web query wizard, if you use, you know, unless it's a really simple page, it's going to get to some kind of, it's going to throw some kind of script error, which you can typically ignore, but lately I've found the web query wizard isn't even kind of able to complete. Um, once we get the web query in place, we're okay, but the wizard that, that creates the web query uh, sometimes is difficult. And so we're going to take a, an approach I've never taken before in this example. I hope it's going to work out okay. So here's the plan. Let's go ahead and get the, the sheet kind of set up. Here's what I want to do. I want to be able to have like a ticker symbol. We want, we want the user to be able to enter an arbitrary set of, of stock tickers and then pull back some information. Let's just say that what we're after is the earnings per share, uh, or I'm sorry, let's do the, uh, the uh, price earnings ratio, and like the beta for that um, particular and there could be lots of other things. We're just going to kind of have it simple here. We'll go ahead and stick with the airline industry that we had in the in the textbook. So I'll put my favorite one, Southwest Airlines, Feel Love, Delta Airlines, Amer uh, United <laughs> Airlines, UKL, uh, JetBlue, uh, who else do we have out there? Alaska Airlines. What's that? You know another ticker for American Airlines? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, I'll zoom in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's try on All right. So, we'd like to do, you know, so let the user choose what stock tickers that they want to put in here. And then we'll pull this information in for them automatically. Now, of course, you know, if you are on an internship, you probably have a bunch of worksheets like this, and your job would be to go and get that by hand. Um, so just you know, where, where might we go for that? I'm going to go to finance.yahoo.com. Oops, finance.yahoo.com. Southwest Airlines. Hillary looking a little smug with herself. We got the latest poll results back. Okay, so here we've got uh, Southwest Airlines, got kind of the current information here. And then down a little bit, we've got the various things here. So we've got the PE ratio, we've got the beta. So this is the information that we're after. So, of course, you know, if I lose my hand, I'd copy this, take it over there, paste it, go to the next ticker, copy it, paste it. Incidentally, what's the, what are the problems with doing this by hand? There are several problems for doing this by hand. And there's one problem that I say is the biggest problem. So what, are, what are some of the problems you see in doing this by hand? It's uh, dynamic. Okay, so it's going to change. Well, yeah, of course it's going to change. Well, let's see the beta, the price range. They're going to change all that. These, these two aren't going to change all that fast. But, yeah, yeah, they're going to change. What's the big deal if it changes? You've got to go and do it again, but okay, but still, that's back to the same process. But what's really the problem with the process is that it takes, yeah, it takes a long time to do. That's not the biggest problem. What, what's the biggest problem? All right, over here. Human error. Oh, listen, if this were your job, you know, for, for, for the week, pulling this data in, and you're doing this, where is your mind while you're doing this? It's anywhere but on this task. And you're going to, you're going to, Think that you put the next ticker symbol in, you're going to update it, you won't notice that you're in the wrong thing. You'll copy this stuff over, or you'll copy the wrong columns over or something. And so we, we desperately want to have this automated, um, especially if we're the ones that have to do it. Okay, so this is what we're after. So the, the web query wizard um, will be pretty good. I'm, let me, let me just show you, the, I'm going to copy this URL. Don't do this along with me, just watch. So I'm going to come on a new sheet here. and. Data from get external data from web. Here we go. Look, 
I can't even process BYU's homepage without getting a script error. Uh, and depending on the complexity of what's going on here, I can say no and sometimes still get this import button to light up. Let me go ahead and go to this one at Finance. And when I was playing this one earlier today, I had to say no about a thousand times. Just keep going through script. No. I really don't think it makes any difference if you press no or yes on this. <laughs> okay, so in this case for me, it looks like at least it works to here. I got the import button. But in some cases, you won't get the import button. And so we are going to record ourselves making a, ma or, or making a macro that will just that will just record, that will just make the um, make a web query. And we'll do it in a really simple URL, and then we'll modify it to be a little bit more robust. So let's go ahead and do that together. So I want to be on a, on a brand new sheet. And the URL, the URL that we're going to use I tried to find some that were kind of easy to type in and really simple. The best one I found was random.org. It's like a random number generator. It's a pretty simple page with like no JavaScript running when you load the page, and so this is going to work out for us. So all we're doing is we're going to use the web query wizard to generate the VBA that we need to create a web query. And then we're going to make some modifications to it. Right? So a large part of what you'll do with VBA is record yourself doing something and then you're going to modify it a lot. Uh, in the world of macros, probably most people who use them don't know how to modify. They'll record and just whatever they can do with recording. For us, recording is going to be like, well, if there's something I don't know how to write by hand, I'll record it just to see the code. But then instead of thinking what I record is the main thing with a little tweaking, it'll be just the opposite. Once we get there, it will be, I'm going to write what I want to write, and occasionally I'll do some recording and bring those little pieces in. And so that's, that's, that's kind of the approach that we're starting to take here. Okay, so that's where we're going to go. So here I am. I'm on, sh on sheet number two. I'm going to record. Ooh, for those of you who are just joining us, do you have? Is there anyone who does not have the developer tab showing in their Excel? Developer tab not there. We have a neighbor helping out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll get that set up. Any questions while we're waiting to get a couple of people here set up with their web or with their uh, developer? Yep. No one will be able to get the Windows. Yeah, the stuff from Windows. I'm going to process it on Friday. What's that? Why do you need Windows? You need what do you need Windows? Yeah, why do we need Windows? You need Windows to run the Windows version of Excel. It's not, there's no web query wizard in the, in the Mac version of Excel. I think the web query part would work okay. So if you like type like crazy once we see the code, you might get it to work. Okay. So let's go ahead and start recording a macro. So we'll say record macro. Let's go ahead and call it, hmm, let's call it web query. And I'll put, control, I'll put a capital W in for the shortcut key. Control Shift W will run this web query. Ooh, and I'm not going to store it in my personal workbook. I'm going to put it into this workbook. We won't go ahead and put a, a comment on this one. Uh, import data from the URL in the active cell. That's what we're going to make it do. It won't do that out of the box. That's what we're going to make it do. And we'll say OK. And remember, when I say OK, it's now recording everything I do, including scrolling. If I scroll, I'm just going to go ahead and scroll up. You'll see that that should have recorded that I was scrolling this window. Um, OK, so now what I want to do is make a web query. So I'll just go to the, the uh, Data tab. And from the first group on the left, I'll choose from Web. And I'm going to plug in random.org. And then I'll just say import. Professor Allen, when you type yes. in random.org, I believe for us to copy paste, we made copy random.org before. Is it going to paste whatever the class copied? Oh, yeah, yeah. So here's the question. If, if we have.
had, uh, what if we just did you know, like a copy and paste from the worksheet into the web query wizard? Would it like remember that action? And the answer is no. The web query wizard pays attention to everything you do unless you've got a dialog box open. If you've got a dialog box open, the web, the, uh, the macro recorder says, oh, a dialog box. I can see you need a little personal time here. I'll avert my eye. It doesn't, it doesn't pay attention to anything you do in the dialog box. But when you say OK, or in this case, import, it takes a look at how it's configured and says, that's how we're going to set things up. So yeah, it would be great if, it, if, it, if, if we could automate the process of what we're looking for here, but we can't. Not by recording, but we can through code, what the class is about. Okay. So then I'll say import. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. And it doesn't really matter where we put it because we're going to modify that part in code as well. Uh, I happen to be on A2, that's fine. And it should bring the data in. I mean, it's not very pretty, but it has to hold that information from the server. Uh, oh, I'm scrolling, so I'm going to record that. I don't really want to record that, so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. We'll go clean things up. Incidentally, I do want to point out that this is a query in the sense that I can refresh it. So let me come back to data and oh, I'm going to right click anywhere in the results of the query. You don't need to do this along with me. We're not going to make any change here. I just want to show you a couple of things. So I'm going to come here to uh, data range properties. And there are several things that I can do here. The interesting thing is that I can tell this thing to refresh <laughs> automatically in the background. So you know, I could refresh this thing every hour. Just as long as the workbook's open, Excel's going to go. Oh, it's been an hour. Go refresh that information with bringing the newest, bringing the newest data. You know, I could set that down to refresh every minute. Uh, that'd be kind of rude. You're kind of you know, asking for that server's resources. Is it because just maybe when I look at it, you know, I want it to be the most updated? You know, I'm going to encourage you not to do that. But it's a query. It, it knows now how to how to reproduce this this import that just happened. Question? Sorry. You walk me through how you open this dialog box again. Yeah. Anywhere on the results of the query, the, the question was how do we open the dialog box? Uh, anywhere on the results of the query, you right click and choose data range properties. Well, the point is, is that you can you can you kind of do some things here. Incidentally, let's take a minute to kind of talk about what's it's kind of fair play in this space. Oh. If I think if I'm thinking about where ultimately we're going to get this data, finance.yahoo.com. Random.org provides you know, a random number, but Excel can generate random numbers as well. I can't have Excel just generate this kind of data. How much does Yahoo charge me for this data? They make it publicly available. Why do they do that? Is Yahoo some kind of altruistic organization? Some kind of uh, not-for-profit organization? They might, be, they might be a no-profit organization, but they're not a not-for-profit organization. <laughs> you know, what are they, why do they do this? Yeah, what they're trying to do is they are selling this space. They, they're saying, listen, we're going to provide some information we think some people want to look at, and what's the cost of looking at this information? Being exposed to, you know, through advertisements on this page. Someone's paying for that. So, when I make that request, through the web query wizard, does it show those advertisements? No, not at all. What I'm doing is I am taking the benefit from this site without paying the cost associated with the site. That's rude. Um, it turns out Yahoo's okay with us doing that, but it's something that we should not abuse. How do we know they're okay with us doing that? You want to know the answer to that question? Might be pyramid incentive. Oh, it's probably an ad. They're going to get you one way or another with those ads. Let's just take. A, I'm just. Gonna, I'm going to point this out to you right now. This is not something you've got to learn. You know, for an exam. It's like part of your part of your technology education. Uh, no extra charge. I really would like to get that solved. You can go to any website and right at the end of .com. Put slash robots.txt. 
you go to the robots.txt file, and it doesn't have to be there. But there are instructions that say, hey, where are you allowed to go automatically? You know, if you're going to do automatic interaction with this page, what are the rules? And, and Yahoo has not restricted anything here. What they've said is, they said there's some, there's some information about a site map. So if you're trying to do this automatically, there's these two pages that will help you. But they aren't restricting you from doing anything. If we go to a different one, we'll see some restrictions. Walmart.com. And so here, they're telling us what we're, where we're not allowed to go. You're not allowed to go to anything that starts with account or checkout or email clicks. There's, there's rules about how you interact with this website in an automated fashion. And they're defined in the robots.txt file. Uh, and if you, if you do things the robots.txt file tells you not to do, you are you're breaking the law. It's against the law to do that. Are they going to come and arrest you for that? No. Um, technically, you're trespassing on their servers. It's kind of a weird legal doctrine that is the basis for this law. It's not trespass to real property, it's trespass to chattel. Um, we can, if you want to talk about that, the, the legal details of this, I can talk about that with you later. Do you have a quick question? Has that been being persecuted over before? Um, yes, the question is, have people been prosecuted for this? And the answer is, not in the way that you would normally think. So, if you, if you trespass on someone's chattel, Chattel is just movable property. It's, it's ownable, movable property. If you trespass on someone's chattel, and there's a whole set of rules that whether you're trespassing or not, you're liable for damages. You know, what is the damage caused because of the trespass? And that's what you would have to pay in a, in a civil, you know, if, if a civil suit was, was held against you. What's the cost of making that request? It's absolutely minuscule. You know, it's probably thousands of a cent for a request. That's the damage that's being caused by by you trespassing. But what happens is, if Yahoo says, oh, you know, we're seeing all this activity, you know, they will expressly say, hey, cut it out. And if they specifically revoke your implied consent to come, then, um, and then you violate it, you could be in big trouble. So it's like, and it's, it's a weird legal doctrine that goes back to like uh, English common law, pre 1600s is the origin of this law that's applied in this legal, in this electronic context. I don't want to go too deep into that today. What I'm, what I'm really trying to tell you is that there are rules, and over here, the reason I like to use finance.com is they have said there are no restrictions to how you act in an automated fashion. But anytime you take the benefit from a system without paying the associated cost, there's a rule for that. You, you might not be surprised to find out that in, in, academic, in the world of academia, we have theories for studying that kind of behavior. The theory that one of the theories that we use for looking at is called social exchange theory. Any ideas what the term for taking the benefit without paying the cost is in social exchange theory? There's a, there's a, there's a word for it. Free riding. It's not free riding. It's not a bum. <laughs> it's actually called cheating. You know, so in, in social exchange, you're cheating if you take the benefit without paying the cost. And so, in a sense, what we're doing here is we're cheating. Now. Expressly, Yahoo has said it's okay to do that. But the whole point here is that you really shouldn't do something that's abusive. Right? They're letting you do this essentially out of the goodness of their heart. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's like a thing you shouldn't abuse. That's what I'm saying. And that's the point why I'm saying don't set this thing to auto refresh every minute just because you can. Somebody is, someone's paying for this on the other end. How much do they pay to send this to you? An itty bitty, minuscule, tiny amount. But it's, but it's a non-zero amount that it costs in this sense. Okay. Whew. Okay, so now I think we have that thing. And it's recorded. What was it? It was uh, Control-Shift-W, things I put up. Now, it turns out, not only is the Web Query Wizard a little bit deficient, but the macro recorder for the Web Query Wizard is also deficient. When I run this Control-Shift-W, it's going to have an error. Invalid procedure call or argument. Um, if you're on 2010, you didn't get an error. But 2013, 2016, you kind of introduced some bug in the recorder. It's a pretty simple one to fix. We'll take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and click on D. I'm going to hit click end here. And let's go ahead and, and go find our code. So remember, to get to the code for a macro, the easiest way, developer, come show your list of macros. 
select a macro and choose edit. That will open up the Visual Basic Editor and it will take you right to that macro. There's lots of places we could be over here. We're right here on the map. Okay, so that's kind of a long block. And the reason is, there are a lot of things that we could set up in that dialog box, the Web Query Wizard dialog box. We didn't make all these changes, but the way that the macro recorder works is it says, oh, dialog box is configured, let's just record the way that it's configured. And here's the offending line right here. In fact, watch this. You don't need to run this with me. I'm going to go ahead and run this again. Invalid procedure caller argument. I'll put debug, and it will show me in yellow. Here's the line that it tried to execute, that it's unable to execute. It says, I, I just don't know what to do with command type equals zero. And that, I don't know what that line is intended to do, but it doesn't do anything. And so I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, incidentally, when you're, when you're kind of new at this, and you want to get rid of a line, the safe way to do it is to put a single quote in front of it. Remember, a single quote is how you say, hey, this is just a comment. Note to the programmer or some future programmer not intended to be interpreted by the computer. And so that way I can essentially turn the line off without deleting it altogether. Okay, so I've had to change that. But let's go ahead and just take a look at the code that we've recorded here. So here's the very first thing I did. I scroll, I just, I did a, I did a scroll down of negative 15. What does that mean? It means scroll up. The way it records is scroll down negative 15. I really don't want to be scrolling here, so I'll just delete that line. What's that? Yours may not show that. I was down, like, I was several several rows down on my page, so I scrolled up. And if you didn't scroll at the beginning, then you didn't have that. That's okay. Because we're just going to delete it anyway. Okay. Now i got to introduce you to the width construct here. The width construct begins with width and ends with end width. It says we're going to do something with an object, something. We're going to talk about objects in detail next time we get together. I'll go ahead and define what an object is right now. In the world of, of object-oriented programming, an object is a thing. There you go. <laughs> it really is just a thing that we can manipulate through code. And so this with and with structure says we're going to do a bunch of stuff with something. What thing are we going to do with? Whatever is on the on the end, or whatever comes after the width. So this is a little bit strange. This says with the active sheet and the set of query tables on that sheet, we're going to add a new one. These parameters here tell us something about how we're going to add it. But that's going to create a new object. We're adding a new object here. And so this whole expression after the width is going to refer to something. In this case, it's the thing that we just created. It's a new query. And then everything on the inside of this that starts with a dot is modifying something about that new thing. And so we're making a new thing, and we're, we're giving it a name. The thing's name, dot name, is going to be www.random. We'll change that here in a second. Um, whatever all these other properties are of this thing, I don't know, but that's just what the properties of the web query wizard uh, notice that we set in that dialog box, and so the macro recorder just recorded that set. At this point, now we should be able to run this again, and then at the end of the end with, this last line is the line that actually tells it to make the request to the web server. It's going to refresh this, it's going to refresh this query. And then again, I had a scroll down here at the end, which I'm going to get rid of. So all I've got inside this macro, inside this sub-procedure, is the statement that says, make a web query configured this way. We're going to make some modifications to it. So far, all I've done is deleted a couple of scrolls and commented out this command type. I'm going to come to a brand new sheet. I'm just going to run that again, Control-Shift-W. And that should bring that data in again. I'm going to pick up somewhere else on the same page. And run it. it's going to write over the top of this, Control-Shift-W. Those two things. It actually, instead of writing over the top, it inserted it on the left and shifted everything else over to the right. Let's take a look at, at, at changing some of this behavior. Okay, so here's the first thing I'd like to do. I would like to change the URL. So you can see that hard-coded into this statement, it's telling me go to, to random.org. 
What I'd like to do is I would like to tell it to get the URL out of the active cell. So let me go ahead and put a URL in a cell right here. I kind of, I'm going to go ahead and pull in this one. You could probably type it if you wanted to. It's not too bad to type. Or you could go to financetechaudio.com and then copy and paste. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to say, I've got this macro that does something with a web query. I'd like to make it kind of general. You give me a URL, run the macro while that's the active cell, and it will put the data right below it. That's what I'm at. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to modify our macro to choose to decide where to go for that web query by looking at the active cell. Now, one way to switch back to kind of between Excel and the, 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 the VBA environment. I'm not sure what is trying to make that sound. Is Alt F11. So if you hit Alt F11, that will just, even if it's not open yet, that will open up the Visual Basic Editor and it will take you right there. Once it's open, it's just another window, so you can use Alt-Tab to go back and forth between them as well. Okay, next thing that we have to learn here. Let's look at these double quotes. In the world of VBA, whenever I write a statement, I'm writing something for the interpreter to try to figure out what to do. If we look, this line right here says, hey, refresh this web query. When the interpreter gets to this line, it looks at that word refresh and it, it tries to figure out what I mean by refresh. It's going, is that some instruction that I know how to do? And, it's, and refresh isn't a built-in part of the Visual Basic language, but it's a, it's a method of the object that was created here. And, and the interpreter then figures that out. It says, oh, okay, we're, ref we're just going to call the refresh method of this object. Ah, I understand that and I can do that. If we ever have something that's not meant for the interpreter to understand. I've got to tell it, don't try to understand this. And the way I do that is by putting double quotes around it. So this collection of characters right here, let's just look at this HTTPS part right here. Is my interpreter, is the, is the visual basic for applications interpreter going to try to understand and figure out what to do with that? No. Who is, what kind of program is supposed to understand that URL? That's for a browser or for the web query wizard to understand. But the interpreter doesn't have to figure it out. The interpreter just has to, just has to keep track of it, but doesn't have to understand it. And so if I'm going to put something in my code that I want the interpreter to keep track of but not try to understand, I put it in double quotes. It's called a string literal. And so that's what this is. I've got to change this string literal to tell it, hey, don't just take the value that's stored here, go read the value out of the active cell. I'm going to open up what's called the immediate window. Have we played the immediate window yet? View, immediate window, control G is the shortcut that will bring that up. The immediate window is, I'm going to see if I can, actually I'm probably going to leave it right there. The immediate window is the place where I can immediately execute one line of VBA code. Message box, copy. I hit enter on that line, it executes that, it shows the message box as I described it here. I could also do this, I could say print 45 or 44, and it just prints that right here. I could say print the current time, N-O-W, and it will print that right here in this little workspace. So it's just a little place that I can say, you know what, I want to execute a line and see what this thing does. I want to think of a place to practice a line that you're going to try to run. This is what I want to do here. I now want to print whatever is in the active cell. So I, right now I have, my active cell is sitting on that URL. And so I will print active cell. That refers to the thing. That's the object. So I'm going to say dot some property. Well, I can do the address. Asterisk. The address of the property. That's G3. Or I could put the value of that property. And that's then the value that's held in that cell. 
If I change the active cell to some other cell and run it, it'll show me whatever is in that cell. You get it? And so what I want to do is instead of this place where I've got that hard-coded as a string literal, I want to tell the interpreter, no, 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 no. Instead of having that in there, I want you to go look at what's in the active cell and bring the value and, and, and abut it, glue it onto, concatenate it to these characters right here. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of this random.org part. And then after that quote, I'm going to put an ampersand. That's concatenation, just to stick these things together. And then active cell dot. Question. Is there a way to do it so it doesn't have to be active cell? So you just run oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, the question is, can, is there, can we do this some other way than the active cell? The answer is yes, my son. We will. Not today. Do you need another ampersand at the end after active cell or no? Aha, uh -huh, good question. Do I need another ampersand at the end? Let's take a quick look. So here's what I had before. It started here with this quote, ended with this quote. I'm getting rid of everything up to the end of this quote. And then I'm just going to concatenate on at the cell value. Go ahead. Sorry, so where do the double parentheses come in? Because you said that's where we like ignore it, but then we end up missing it. The double parentheses? The double quotes? The double quotes, sorry, yeah. So the double quotes is something that told the machine not to read. No, that's a ah. factor. Yeah, so the, the double quotes basically tell the they tell the interpreter not to try to understand it. Just keep track of these characters. When it sees this word here, dot name, it has to understand what, what that means. Here, we're saying, look, don't try to figure this out. This is not meant for you. This is just a, a set of characters that you need to keep track of because you're going to send them some, somewhere else to work with. And so what we're doing is saying, listen, still keep track of these four characters, URL semicolon. Now glue on to that, concatenate on to that, whatever is in the active cell. Okay, now let's look at this. So you'll notice we have a destination. It's telling us to go into range A2. I don't want it to go into range A2. Where do I want it to go? I want it to go right below the active cell. So let's figure, and this is a this is a reference to a range object. It's, it's it, Excel is for the Excel interpreter is figuring out range. It sees that and it goes, oh range, I get it, and it's trying to figure out that's an object, and then it's gonna it's gonna work with it. So I want to put it one cell below the active cell. Here's how we do that. So I could say print the active cell's address. Or from the active cell, every range object has a method called offset. So I can say active cell dot offset, and I can tell it how many rows and how many columns I want to add offset, and then I will ask for the address of that cell. So this refers to a cell. I call a method and instruction, something that cell knows how to do. I say, hey, offset, I'm calling the offset method telling it one row and zero columns, it sends back to me a reference to a different set. It's the one down below. I then ask for the address of whatever object this evaluates to. And so that is the cell right below the active cell. That's how I say that. The cell below the active cell, active cell dot offset one zero, and then whatever property I want to give it. Incidentally, the second argument here is optional. I've got to tell it how many rows to offset, but if I omit the columns, it will assume zero columns. So if I just offset one, it will go down one. Okay, so I'm going to take that, active cell offset one, and right where it says range A2, I have a little parentheses confusion here. This parenthesis here matches to this one. And so I'm not going to get rid of that one. But this parenthesis, you can see that this set right here is a set. So I'm going to leave that closing one on there, and I'm going to just delete this, and put it 
put an active cell offset one. That's where I want the thing to be. Can you use negative scripts? Yes. So I could offset negative negative ten. Here's the problem. If I offset negative and it tells it to go into a cell that doesn't exist, there's no negative there's no negative one cell. There's no cell number cell number zero, row number zero. That'll cause an error. So you can tell it to go up and to the left by using negative. Okay, so now I've done two things. I've told it I want you to pull the URL to go to from the active cell and put the results right below. So I'm going to come back to Excel. I'm here on my active cell. Control Shift W should run that and pull now the information for Yahoo. And let's see if we've got information that we're looking for here. Yeah, this is financial information. Here's looking for the beta. Here's the PE ratio and here's the beta. So the two numbers that we're after came. They're not very pretty. But computers are pretty good at dealing with not very pretty. We're going to make it just to get the data that we need for the user. Okay, so I want this part to be working for you. If you haven't got this part working, now is the time to let it be known. I've got a TA here who can help. Your neighbor might be able to help. Let's try it this way. If you do have it working, raise your hand. Okay, good. So that's almost everyone. Now, if you don't have it working, want some help? Up here? Uh, Cameron? Oh, is that a question or is that some help? Cameron, so go ahead and pause. Okay, so we're seeing now what happens if we run this thing twice. So I'm right here on that. The cell has got my URL, Control Shift W. And we're going to see it's going to run it, but it's going to push all that other data over here. The reason it's doing that is because of this setting right here. Refresh by default, it says, hey, when we refresh, just push everything over. That seems like this is me. Give me the default. And when I refresh, I want to refresh right there in the same place. So uh, we're going to change this. And instead, we're going to put in XL overwrite cells. Whenever I see this, I always think X lover right here. X L O V E L. That's your X lover option. <laughs> XL overwrite cell. So now that I've changed that option when we create it, go ahead and delete the ones that it inserted. I'll run that again. And now it's going to refresh right over the top. In fact, I can change the ticker symbol now. Let's see something that we can know that's changed. Stand by for a second. So um, PE ratio of 9.7. I'm going to change this now to Delta Airlines. And I'm going to run that again. Oops. Control Shift W. And I'll come down to the PE ratio now I forgot. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to look at this URL up here. Actually, you'll notice it says the ticker here is in here twice. It turns out, I'm not sure why it has that second ticker on the end. Actually, just the first one is all we really need. So now let's look at the PE ratio. <coughs> well, anyway, we've got now Delta Airlines is showing here instead of Southwest. And we should have a different PE. 5.99. Okay, so that's pretty good. So by changing two things, we change the URL here, and we change this, the refresh style, to Excel overwrite cells. So now when it refreshes, it just goes right over the top of the other one. That's pretty good. Ah, so you can see that it takes kind of a little bit of modification to get us going here. And how would, by the way, how would you know, how would you learn that? How would you, if you wanted to find, gosh, how could you possibly know what to type in there? What would you do? Google. Yeah, Google's your friend. Uh, you know, web query, VBA, data moves to the right, query. Somebody on Stack Overflow is going to have the answer. Okay. All right, here's what I'd like to do now. 
next step I want to do is I want to make this a little bit more dynamic by just saying, listen, what if I put Southwest Airlines here? I'm going to change this to be a formula. So this is going to be equals, in quote, that whole thing, without the ticker, and then concatenated with the cell right above. And so now, the, the cell that's got my full URL is going to be set up dynamically based on whatever I put in the cell right above it. That would be pretty good. So now I can just change that just you know, change that to a different ticker, and then run it, run it again, and hold it in again. We're making some progress here. How many of you are going? This is a lot of work. Yeah, I'm going. This is a lot. I'm going to throw all the work to the other. Uh, that's the good. That's that's the bad news. The good news is it's a lot of work, which means not very many people are. You'll amaze your friends. You'll be able to show your mother this and she will be proud. Okay. More importantly, you'll amaze your coworkers and your boss. All right. So now here's what I'd like to do. Now that we've got this in place, I'll go ahead and change this to United Airlines. Control Shift W. And that should bring in the United Airlines data. United Continental Holdings, Inc. Okay, now that we have this query, this macro in place, I would like to use that to integrate the whole process of pulling the data from this original list that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe out sheet number two. And I'm going to copy the formula that we had, actually, I'm going to delete sheet number two altogether. I'm going to keep the one that we built here. I'm just going to delete things until I've got this over here, the ticker at A1, and everything else then happening right below. A1 is where the ticker is, everything else is below. What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to say, okay, now let's take the first ticker off my list, come plug it in here to A1, run this query, run the macro that refreshes this, find the information that I'm after, so we'll pull up the beta and the price earnings ratio, and then bring that back to the table that I'm generating. Now, I'm trying to fill in this table. Price earnings ratio and the beta. And I think I'm ready to record myself doing that. Can we give it a shot? Well, I'm going to go ahead and change the names of these sheets. Just, it'll make our code a little bit more read, readable. So instead of sheet one, I'm going to call this tickers. And instead of sheet three or sheet two, whatever you've got there, I'm going to call this web query. Now, remember that any time I'm recording a macro, before I start recording, two things I want to think about. What are they? When the user runs this, where should the active cell be when they run it? And when this thing's done running, where do I want the active cell to leave off? So in this case, where should the active cell be when I start running it? Yeah, B2 would be pretty, or A2 would be pretty good. A3, 4, anywhere. We're just going to get the, the information for one of these. And then we're going to add some code to make it happen over and over again. And so I probably want it to start here, but now where do I want it to leave off? What, what's that? End of the list. Remember, we're only getting one. Oh, just one. Just one. That's right. We, that, that's right. We, we're going to put data here and put data here, but we want to end up over here. So we're ready to run the next time. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start here in United Airlines. That's fine. And I'll record. Cine macro 2, I'm going to call it um, get stock data. And control shortcut. For stock, I'll just put Control S. Wait, Control S, that sounds familiar. We'll put a capital S in there, Control Shift S. Store in this workbook. Uh, leave the description blank, that's fine. Say OK. OK, it's recording. I'm going to copy that. So I'm already on the active, so I'm going to copy it. 
It's going to record, copy the act itself. How many? Question of the yeah. If you were to, on the, like, the uh, quick command, if you were to put shift w in there, would that override our last macro? Would that cause an error? Yeah, the question is, what happens if you put shift w, capital W in there? I don't know. It would either override it or it would cause an error. <laughs> My guess is it would override it. <laughs> All right, so I've copied that, control C. I'm going to select the web query tab. It's going to record, select that sheet. I'm going to go to A1. If, I, if you're already on A1, you better click off of it and click back on it so it will record, go to A1. And now I'm going to paste. Did that paste? I picked the same one. That was really bright up pink. Now I'm going to hit the down arrow key. That will actually, that will, the reason I don't click on it is I don't want to follow the link. If I click on that link, it's going to follow it because it turned into a hyperlink. So that will say select A2. Now I'm going to press Control Shift W to pull the data for that to run that other macro. It will record, run that macro. That's fine. Now it's got the data. Here's the trick. I gotta figure out where that data is. If I just scroll down to it, that would be okay as long as the data doesn't shift down. You just bring all that data. What if some more data goes above it? I'm gonna be in trouble. So instead of just going to find it, I can, I'm going to tell it cell will find it. We're looking for the beta. Control F, beta. Perfect. Beta. It finds the beta right here. Close the, so Control F, beta, it found it. Okay, now I've got to be careful because if I just click on the beta or the one above it for the price earnings ratio, it's going to record go to B120. I don't want it to go to B120. I want it to go up a little bit and over a little bit from where I am. Now, you're familiar with the idea of a relative reference in a formula. There's the same idea in recording a macro. Let's go back to the developer tab. On the developer tab, there's this thing right here, use relative references. The default is use absolute references. I'm going to click on use relative references. That stays on. And now, when I click... Instead of on beta, I'm going to click on the one just diagonal up to it, the PD ratio. That's the first one I want. I think. Or did I put beta first in the list? Do you remember? PD ratio. Okay, I'll put the PD ratio first. It wouldn't matter. I can do it either way, but this will be a little cleaner. Now it's going to record, go up one and over one. Now that I'm there, I'll copy Control C. I'll come back to my ticker sheet. I'm going to click the next one over. I'm still on use relative references, so it's going to record move over one, and now I'll paste. Now I'll go back to web query. I, I feel pretty good about just going down to the next one to pull in the beta. Copy that one. Go back to tickers. Over one. Paste. Am I done? Come down and select because I'm still on relative, it'll, it'll record, go down, and over. Now I'm ready. So I'll stop that. I should be able to press Control-Shift-S again, and it should now pull in the information for JetBlue. Control-Shift-S again should pull in the information for Alaska Airlines. And in fact, if I only had these six tickers, I'd be done. I'd just run this six times Control-Shift-S. But what if I have 600? What's the problem? My pinky's going to get tired. We're pressing Control Shift S. It's going to take a half hour or more to get that for. It'll take a while. So what I would like it to do is I would like to tell them, listen, I want this to happen over and over again. Should we go do that? Let's do it. So in this next little exercise that we're going to do, we're going to say, listen, start A2 and keep pressing control shift s or running that that macro that we created until we get to a blank cell that's what we're at so i'm going to come back to my visual basic editor now this time i am going to create a whole new sub procedure i've got two we've got one called web query and we can see it probably doesn't hurt for us to kind of just look over this quickly here's what we just recorded in uh, get stock data Copy the active cell, whatever is selected, copy it. 
select the web query sheet, select A1, paste. This cut copy mode equals false. You know how when you press control C, you get that flashing line around? That's cut copy mode equals true. So it's just recording them when I cut copy mode. It turns out it would go out anyway, but it, I'm not sure why it records that window. I then select A2. <coughs> I ran the web query macro. We did the find, and then we did all of our copying and chasing down. So now I just want to call get stock data multiple times. To make it a little bit clearer, I'm going to create a new sub procedure to do that. And it doesn't matter where I put it. I can put it at the top of all of these, between these two, or at the bottom. And I can't put it in the middle of another one, but I can put it, as long as it's not in the middle, I can put it somewhere else. I mean, I can put it at the top, bottom, or in between. So, sub, I'll call this get all data. When I hit enter, it automatically puts in the parentheses, it puts in the end sub. Now I'm just I'm going to say listen I want to get stock data I want to do the same thing that get stock data does and a little bit more that's how I can call a macro from another macro or a procedure from another procedure when we record it it does it a little bit differently in fact I would probably want to simplify the one that we had down here just to be that same way but we'll leave it there for now but before I run this a couple things I want to do. Number one, I want to select a two. I want to select, yeah, what do I want to select? I want to start off in a two. Well, I've already got a line that selects a two on the active sheet. So I'll just copy that one and bring it up here. You can type it in pretty quickly as well. So now we're going to start with going to a two. And now we want to get stock data over and over and over again until we run into a blank cell. To, to do that, it takes in programming what's called a loop. Here's one of the loops we can make in VBA. It's called a do loop. It starts with the keyword do, ends with the keyword loop. All do does is it says, here's the beginning. Loop says, go back to the beginning. How many times is this going to How long is this going to execute? Forever. Well, forever is a really long time. It's not really going to execute forever. It's going to execute until a power failure or until. <laughs> network errors and execute until the second coming, the end of the world, or nuclear holocaust, or something. But I don't, I don't want to wait that long. So I got to give it some other reason to stop. So I'm going to do until the active cell dot value until the value of the active cell is equal to. Hmm, I could do until I keyword stop. <coughs> so until I bump into a cell that says stop, you know, maybe I write the word stop at the bottom. Only trouble with doing that, there might be a ticker symbol, stop. You know, maybe it's some kind of a stop sign manufacturer or something. <laughs> so maybe I'll just make it stow. That could be, you know, or just, or, <laughs> or nothing. It's a really strange way to say nothing. It's just quote, quote. It's a collection of characters with no characters in it. That should do it. Yeah. Can you also use the uh, is null function? Is null wouldn't do it, but there is a constant defined that would do this same thing. So this is a string literal with no characters in it. There's a name for that. Like e e blank or something. Or is blank. Is blank. Anyway, there's a bunch of them. Uh, it's uh, is, is, is empty is a function that operates on. Slow down, folks. We've got like three minutes to finish this. This will work. <laughs> it will work beautifully. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, hey, you know what? We need one more thing here. We don't have a shortcut key for this. We could put a shortcut key for this, but I want to show you one other thing. On the developer tab, there's this, this little toolbox right here. It looks like a, a little toolbox with some tools. I'm going to insert a button. There's a couple of different buttons here. There's one down under ActiveX. Forget that one. I want this form controlled square. This is going to put a button right here on the worksheet that will run this, this macro. So, so I'm on the developer tab, insert this very first button. I then I'm going to draw that in. And as soon as I do that, it's going to say, oh, you're making a button. You probably want to run a macro. It brings up a list of the macros, which one you want to assign. Get all data. We'll say, okay. 
And now I've got a button here that I'll change the name of it to say it's uh, stop, I'll just it's called stop date, or get date. The name's arbitrary. It's the connection when I create it that tells it when to run. So now it should start by activating this, no matter where I am, it should activate that, and then it should just crank through and get that date. It's like it's doing it. Once we learn a little bit more about this, we can make this so that it will actually show it while it's running along so we can see the progress. But once it's finished, it should show all that data in question. Is there any way that we could do this without having the web query tab? Like, could it just go out immediately from the web and then back to the... The question is, could we do this without having the web query tab? A couple of answers to that. Oh, look, we've already gotten the information here. That's great. So, yes, it, we can. There's two ways, a couple ways to do it. One, <laughs> We can do this without the web query wizard. There's other ways to interact with a website. I'll teach you how to do that. Two, I can make, you know how you, you can see this web query sheet? You can make it hidden. Now, if you make it hidden, the user can unhide it. There's another thing you can do in a web sheet, uh, to a worksheet. You can make it very hidden. And if you make it very hidden, the user can't unhide it. So that would be another option, probably the easiest option. Can you also protect the worksheet so people can't unhide those things? We protect it so that you, so you can't unhide it. The answer is we could protect it, but then we can't write to the cells. So we'd have to unprotect, write, and then reprotect. That would be a bad way to do it. it you could do it, but you're much better just to make it very hidden. And it's easy to do. We had you know more than 15 seconds to go in. Okay, questions, folks? So if you've got 600 stock tickers, what are you going to do? It's still going to take a while to run. Wouldn't it be great if at the very end when it's done, you could say, hey, Excel, send me a text message because I'm going to go to ham sandwich. I want to know it's time to come back to work. Can we make Excel send me a text message? Oh, yeah. And I'll teach you how to do that in this class. All right. That's it. Last dismissed.